What's good, my people? It is good to be back. So um, today we got a lot of things to discuss, and I want to make this purely about investing. So if you guys go through my YouTube, right, you can actually see that I actually unlocked a couple of my investment videos for you guys. So you can look at the old ones that I had locked and, you know, go through that process and, and see what I've been talking about for a while now, right? So when it comes to what we're going to discuss today, it's going to be a, 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 a good amount of stuff that can help you guys with investing. And as you can see, I got my hoodie on, right? So investing is for winners. Again, you can find this on tommyworks.net, tommyworks.net, tommyworks.net. Okay, guys? So we have a lot of things to discuss. You know, I've still been active in the gym and all that good stuff. You know, you want to make sure that, you know, that you're optimizing your time. You're trying to make yourself as, you know, as, you know, as good as possible in, in a roundabout way in terms of what you want to do career-wise, what you want to do business-wise, how you want to invest, what you want to do with your body, you know, dieting, working out, running, uh, reading, even having leisure time to watch movies, enjoy your life. Like, you know, you can do that as well. I appreciate God for everything you've, he, everything he has done for you. Be thankful, be, uh, be, um, be thankful, be happy, uh, be, uh, um, nice individuals who work at, a, at, at stores, you know, always be, courteous, you know, all these type of things go into bettering yourself, right? So this is what this hoodie represents to me, right? So um, this video is going to be about why you suck at investing, right? So why you suck at investing and keep losing money. So in the past couple of months, right, the stock market has not been doing so hot. We all know this. I know this. You know this. They know this, <laughs> there's nobody over there, but. So we, we all know that it's been a, a terrible couple of months, right? You know, we've had major dips, you know, uh, like 30%, 20% drops to 30% drops in certain ETFs and certain companies like ARK, like TAN, like like other, other things, like the NASDAQ has dropped off tremendously as well. Costco fell, you know, off a little bit as well. But I think it's been going on before what recently happened this this all is being contributed by the rising interest rates like the fear of rising interest rates and also because you know people are you know are are assuming that uh that this run this incredible run that the that the stocks had is just going to continue and not let off some steam that's that's apparent when you see things go up 500 percent in one year do you think it's just going to keep shooting up it has to let off some steam what goes up must come down who said that? Isaac Newton? What goes up must come down, right? So you got to be prepared for all that. So when you're doing stuff like options for tan and you see that it's it went up a thousand percent and whatever or, and things like that, you got to know that it's eventually going to come down. Yes, it will pick, it'll pick back up, but at the same time, it's not going to be a continuous straightforward shot into the sky. It's impossible. So let me tell you guys why you, you suck at investing because you're you, you, this is the reason why. You guys like, you know, like my like myself, I do options trading and I know that a lot of you guys do options trading. And if you do options, trust me, you already know how just a 3% drop of the stock price, 4% can diminish your option, you know, the amount that you're making with your options, your returns, right? And we've had we've been in a in 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 uh in a sell off for about 2 months. So we we know that you know, that, you know, we have this off of 20%, 10%, 15%. Our options are dropping more tremendously. They're dropping, they're losing so much more value than, um, than let's say, you know, if you just bought the stock outright, like you did like a, like a, a natural um, investment strategy, just having a long-term investment, just buying the stock, not doing the option trade, right? Because, because the options are valued differently. So if it, a 15% a drop can be like thousands of dollars in your options, right? Hundreds, thousands. But a 15% drop, and if you own the stock, like just naturally buying it, whatever, long-term holdings, that can, is probably like $5, like $10 that you're losing, right? That's not that, that's not that bad. That's not that bad, right? So the thing is, a lot of people are feeling the hurt because a lot of people do options now. 
those who are long-term portfolio holders aren't really feeling that hurt as much, but they, you know, they still feel it. But a lot of people got into good prices for some of these stocks, right? So, you know, you should still be doing good. I mean, like I bought Apple during the, the pandemic and it's like, um, it's still above the price that I got it for, which is like $73, right? So it's still above that price substantially. So it's like, it's it's good. Like if it drops, it, that's cool, that's fine. I still have it above that. Microsoft as well, um, uh, other investments like, uh, um, let's see, like Costco and things of that nature, right? So um, the thing is, when you when you have it at such a low price, you have enough wiggle room for things to drop. You're going to be losing some of your returns that you've made, but that's not a, a bad thing. So let me tell you why that it's not mapping out for you guys. So the reason why is because you do not have a long term portfolio slash strategy. You all want to be options gods. And I'm telling you, you cannot do options and not have a long term. It's going to hurt you. It's gonna hurt you at the end of the day when your when your option is at like me. I took a I took a dip. I was at like eight, not almost nine k in value for my options. Aside from my long term portfolio, which is already has a, a a good amount there too, right? So aside from that, I was up like like eight k in my options. Right now, I took some profits. I sold some stuff. I sold XLF. It was going up pretty high. I took about a thousand dollars in profit. You know, I, I sold that, but let's be honest, my stuff drops significantly. I'm down to like 5,000, right? So a lot of things took a sell-off, Apple, Tan, ARKF that I have, and uh, I did like a, a Live Nation. I, I was too greedy with Live Nation. I got in when it was high. I, didn't, I should have waited think, knowing that it was going to drop, but hey, it's, it's fine. I have it for a 2022 contract. And that's another thing, but we'll get there about the length of the option contract. So, so you do not have a long-term portfolio. That is number one thing why you suck at investing and you're taking L's. Please get yourself a long-term portfolio and I'm going to give you guys a strategy for your long-term portfolio, right? So this is what you want to do. You want to have a base. You want to have a base, right? So when we're thinking about base for investment, we want to look at an index fund, an ETF, right? So I would suggest looking at the VU or VTI, right, as a base, because collectively those those do they, they capture the majority of the market, whether that be tech, whether that, that be consumer, whether that be financials, whatever. They capture uh, the majority of of the uh, the stock market. VTI captures the entire stock market, and technically VTI actually does better than the VU. Uh, just buy like a couple hundred dollars or whatnot, but it does better technically than the VU. So it's up to you. And with VTI, you're getting the entire market. And it is cheaper than the VU right now. I think it's at $200. The VU is at like at $350, right? So, some, so it, it depends on what you want to do. And I would suggest getting that as the base. So you will be putting your money into that continuously and consistent, being consistent with that. Maybe you, you have a plan, you device like, oh, I want to put in $100 into the VU every week or $50 into the VU every week, $50 into, uh, into, uh, into VTI every week, or whatever. And then that would be your basis. That would be like, okay, a that, would be, that would be there to protect you because you know they capture the majority of the market and they do about eight to like 9% on average, right? So on average, you do about eight to 9%. So your money is still gonna rise with that. And then, you know, of course it's gonna have some, some, some times of down periods, but at the end of the day, it's better than putting your money into a savings account that offers nothing and has all these stipulations that you got to use your card 12 times. You got to put your direct deposit in there. Like that's too many stipulations and the interest rate is only like one point something percent. So or that's even on the high end. Right. Most of them is like is like zero point five zero. You can get the good online banks offer zero point five zero, which isn't bad. And I do suggest that you all hold cash as well. Right. So hold cash. There's nothing wrong with holding cash. And finding it like a, a, a high interest uh, account to put your cash in. There's nothing wrong with that. So, so you want to have that as a base so you can be protected. It's like a safety net. You put in like a hundred every week, boom, boom, boom. Or you can do the math calculation, four hundred a month, right? So you have a, you have a plan. You devise a plan for yourself. I want to do fifteen hundred a month for my investments. So you devise like what you want to you want to you want to spend your money in or put your money into. So maybe instead of like four hundred, you can do two hundred a month, or you can even do whatever you want, right? So that would be the first level. That's like the base, like the where 
you know, you can capture yourself if anything goes awry, right? So the next thing you want to do is then you want to look for something like <clears throat> something like like another we're going to do another ETF, right? So like QQQ, right? Or VTG, something that focuses on, you know, I would say high performance ETF or index fund. So when you have a QQQ, you look, it's like 200 something percent in the last five years or so. And the returns are, it far out sees the VTI and the SPY, but there's always more risk with that, being that it's, it focuses on the NASDAQ, right? The NASDAQ index. And yes, it can, right now we're in a drop, but even then it's, it's still holding up pretty well because I bought QQQ at like 290, 299. And it's it's even with all this droppage, it's done. It's still at three twelve, three something, and it's like that's still really good. And honestly, QQQ is where I invest a majority of my money in because it holds so many good companies in my eyes. It holds Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, all these crazy companies that do really well. It holds them in there, and it's like yes, it's tech and all that stuff. But QQQ also holds things that aren't necessarily tech as well inside of, inside of the actual fund, right? So that's another layer, QQQ, high performing ETFs or index. That's what you wanna go into as well. And you wanna devise that 1500 you have a month into that. Then, or you wanna do, if you wanna do v, VTG or no, is it VTG or VGT? I forgot what it's called, but it's another tech uh, in, uh, index fund. And that does well, as it does really well, or you can even do XLK, whatever you wanna do, right? All those are tech based that has high performance. So you want to do that and invest your money into either one of those three. It's up to you. I like the NAS, I like the QQ because it tracks the NASDAQ. That's my thing. So then you want to start looking into individualized companies, right? So like Microsoft, right? Yes, I know Microsoft is in QQQ, but you want to look into individualized companies because you can get you can get higher returns. So like Microsoft, like Apple, right? Um, you can do Thermo Fisher, right? So you want to look into one of these that that, that specializes in in tech. I'll, I'll like let's look at Microsoft, or you can do Nvidia or Twilio or whatever you want to do, right? You just have to make sure that you're doing your research and you're going to uh, Yahoo Finance to look at the balance sheet, to look at the cash flow, and to look at certain things within that company. I'm not going to divulge all that into this video; It'll take a while. So you want to look at stuff like that. So, and. You know, Apple is still relatively cheap right now, right? Microsoft is, is doing pretty well. Microsoft was actually going through a rough period before this sell-off. And Microsoft has been doing really well during the sell-off time. I, I noticed this for sure. So Microsoft is a good one. Um, so individualized company, right? So Microsoft, the reason why I like Microsoft, I like Apple, is because they specialize in AI. They, they have uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, in which a lot of people don't know how important that it is in our world and what we do right now. When you have things like Netflix that show you the shows that they that you watch most of the time, they give you recommendations. You have Microsoft with Microsoft Azure. You have Apple with, um, with Siri and all these other type of automation and machine learning they have in there. So what you want to do when you're choosing a, a individualized tech company, you want to make sure that you're looking for one that's, that that works with AI, right? It works with AI and has a good balance sheet. You know, you can do NVIDIA, you can do um, a, a whole list of them, Twilio, Microsoft, Google. I know Google's a little expensive. NVIDIA right now is at $500. Um, if you want, you can invest into that, but you want to make sure you're looking at uh, indicators. So you want to do the moving average and see where it's at within the moving average. You see, that's a good price point. You want to buy that. You can even do Salesforce. Salesforce focuses on that as well and, and things of that nature. So it just depends on that individualized company that you want, right? That tech company. Next, you want to look at consumer staples, right? So you want to look at something like, let's say Costco or Walmart or Johnson & Johnson or or some like something like that, or you can do like a health, like Thermo Fisher, or anything else, right? So anything that you that you like, McDonald's, right? Something or uh, or uh, what's the other one? Nike, things of that nature. All those consumer stuff, all those other stuff. It's not really tech based. Things that pertain to different parts of life other than just technology. So you want to look into that. And then I like Costco. I have Thermo Fisher um, as well. So Costco, you can look at Walmart if you, that's what you want, because those are defensive plays in my eyes, right? So Costco, if anything goes awry, we're in another type of pandemic or something like that, or, you know, people always buying, you know, in bulk 
you know, of things. And they have a membership plan for Costco. And that's why I like it. It's a, it's a defensive play. It's, it's passive. To me, it's just passive income. They, they've done 200% in the, in the past five years. And to me, it's just something that I can always lay back on. And Costco had a major dip. So I, I just couldn't resist. I had to buy more. And it's doing, it's now it's going back up. Now it's going back up. You see? So you can do Microsoft. I'm not Microsoft. You can do Walmart. If you guys like Walmart, you can do that. Walmart is actually pretty good as well. McDonald's, um, Nike. Uh, what else? Uh, you can do maybe some 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 uh, hotel travel stuff if you want to do that. So it's up to you guys uh, what you want to do with that one. But just make sure it's a little distant from tech, right? You can do health. You can do consumer. You can do materials. Whatever you want. But just make sure they're good companies and distant from tech. And that's pretty much all you guys need, right? And um, you know, you'll get dividends if you want. You can add a dividend play. You can get a dividend ETF. I love SPHD, right? I love SPHD. It's a dividend ETF that pays me dividends monthly, and it's my one of my favorite dividend plays. I like it, you know. So you can get a dividend play. You can get realty income. You can get whatever you want. Maybe a bank that pays dividends, or financials, anything that you want. You can do a dividend play, and that's all you guys need to be secure. See how I just mapped that out for you guys? Simple. So then after that, when you want to do your options, you feel safe. You can still, you can still do your options, even though they're, you know, they might, they're probably have times of a sell-off. You're not going to do well. You can do your options, but still focus on your long-term portfolio. I know it's a lot of money to be putting into everything, but trust me, it's going to pay off. If you can do it, just do it. You don't have to do 1500. You can do like 500 and you can just map out what you want to do with your options, right? You can do 1500, right? You can do, oh, I'm going to spend a thousand on options a month or, or within a three month period, whatever you want to do. You don't have to get an option every single month. No, you only really need like four options within a year, four or five options within a year. So you don't even need to do all that for your options, but you know, that will help you mitigate and minimize your losses when it comes to trading right and doing options and trying to make a, a nice flip so i don't want to make this video too long but i hope you guys understood the process and also for your options a lot of you guys are taking l's fat l's because your options are in short term like i i've been preaching this i know it's 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 expensive but a lot of them have dropped in price because of the sell-off and you could have got a lot for 2022 2023 not as expensive as it used to be. So I know it's expensive, but trust me, it saves you a lot of pain and you can always recoup what you lost in the first three months in the later years. I mean, later, yeah, later year, later month, right? Especially if you have it till 2023. So boom, that's all you guys need to know. Um, I hope this really helped you all with what you're doing. And I gave you guys a basis. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like an off. It's, it's just like it protects you, right? Having a long term always protects you because you're like, okay, my long term is still up like eight thousand. You know, like my options may have dropped, but I got my long term, and you know, I can just start pushing some money into there if I don't feel like doing options right now and things of that nature. Instead of always trying to gamble and risk your what you earn, what you make. You know what I'm saying? So other than that, guys, I really appreciate you for watching this video, and uh, I'll see y'all later. Don't forget to get the hoodies. All right. TommyWorks.net. Peace out.